Hi, in this video, I'll give you a couple of ideas how to play solo on top of that backup I've showed you previously. But also in this video, in the end, I'll provide you with a backup that's very scaled down, nothing but the basses and just the rhythm. So everything I show you in this video, you can apply directly to that backup. So let's go. To be honest with you, I don't play only solo. I'm not a single note player. I don't play electric guitar and I always combine solo parts with either a little bit of a backup or something happening on the basses. And uh, let me demonstrate that. To start off, I would basically always start the solo on the lower frets. Maybe if I would go on this at the end of a verse or something and then I'm about to go into solo, then I would just go to the seventh here of the E chord. Uh, maybe I would go to either A chord so I'm kind of going back and forth between uh, the backup and solo lines how to call them so the first thing I did is either like this so I just kind of release the make this little pull off and just let the first string run or I just go so the first and second string could be open and then I'm already on the chord here so that would be the first one there are several other licks that you could do within this uh, E7 chord coming back to the E so one of those is something I've previously showed you in the backup video because I combined those. But let's assume this is within a solo. So, so see, I've already kind of did a couple of syncopations. And I'm not only doing the triplets, like... Which is also nice, but maybe... In one part of the solo, you could do it this way, and the other one could be with more of a... So let's break that down. So... Comparing this to the backup, where I could sometimes play this as a backup, this is kind of more emphasized. I'm kind of giving it more energy. It's like... I'm pointing this up. So it's like a more bang to it, right? So that would be in, in the chord of E. Then when I go to the A, uh, I could maybe combine with a... So this lick is a... played in several different ways so this first one or so so even if I play the first string and I release the uh, let's say uh, lift my finger from the second string it will add this open note on the second string so so you, you still hear both notes so either that or is the third way to play it so it's got whatever you know comes to your fingers you do that but it's good to like, kind of learn all these three so so You, you see this jump here so I go from this third fret with my uh, middle finger and then play this 
open for a string. And then I kind of glide very fast from the fourth to the second fret. Or with this hammer, uh, pull off. Or just you do the hammer on here on the second fret of the fourth string. So the whole leg. And then go back to E. Where I can continue to play maybe a little round of the back up at the same time. And the reason I'm telling you all this and why I'm always incorporating back up a little bit, even if I'm playing solo, is because I'm I'm a mostly solo acoustic player. So whenever I play a gig, I'm accompanying myself. So I could of course, I'll do less on the basses while I'm playing the solo, but I'll still kind of, I want to emphasize the rhythm. I wouldn't go into kind of uh, single note bursts on the neck. I'm, I'm, I've never done it. I'm not interested in doing that. I like the groove and I like to keep the groove. So I'm passing it on. If you like doing it that way, do it. If you want to do it your own way, just take these solo licks on the treble strings and apply those when somebody else is playing the backup Great, great. So, we were here. And then we would go to the B chord. And very often I would just play the B chord. I wouldn't make any special lick. Maybe uh, that's a nice one sometimes. So, I'm keeping the B chord. So I release the first string, let it open, be, uh, be open, and then bend on the third fret, either with this finger or with my in, uh, pinky, depending uh, which guitar I'm playing. And this guitar has a combination of, of string gauges, which is not so common. So since I'm very often using this guitar as my main guitar and only guitar on a gig or a jam session, I'm keeping my uh, first string with a 0 16. So it's 16 on the first one, 18 on the second, and then the rest of the strings are from the light set, which like uh, 23, 32, 42, and 54. So uh, it's a very even sound. I love the way it sounds, but I've, I've never really bent strings. Uh, I prefer to have them ready for some slide playing instead of uh, bending. So even if I bend sometimes, it can be that I have to help out with another finger that's stronger than the pinky. So, yeah, something like that. Sorry, I just bumped the microphone, so. And then you could just... After that B chord, can do that lick again. So let's do that slowly. And then the turnaround, which kind of goes into the backup. So if you want to play something on top of the uh, uh, turn around. You can do it maybe like this. So instead of doing that, you and then you meet the back up and then just go back to the rhythm or whatever. Maybe the next round of the solo. So uh, let's do that uh, slowly. Turnaround can also be a part of a solo and a, you know a kind of a melody that you would play there. And then go back. So slowly this last melody. Uh, And 
here. So I used my uh, pinky here because I'm kind of closest to that string here. But you can also use your, uh, I don't know, ring finger, middle finger, whatever. But the melody goes from the open second string, second fret, open first, and then so gliding from the third to the fourth fret. And then I kind of put my hands in the position of an E sus chord, like but just because I want to be ready to play to play that lick. And the lick is on the second fret, third string, and then I release it. And then that hammer on, and then the notes on the second fret, fourth string, and then the bass, and then we'll go back to B7. So one more time, very slowly. So on. So that was uh, a kind of part of a solo uh, on these first couple of frets. Uh, the next, let's say, uh, frequency that I like, I, I like to divide solo parts in frequencies. The first one is down here. All these notes have a certain frequency, then I would go to the 7th fret and the 9th uh, fret here to this form of E chord, which is basically this. This is your E chord up here. But we're only playing these first two strings as a part of a solo, and then we'll fool around with some notes here. A lot of this is influenced by Brown and McGee, who, who I've you know, listened uh, for, for many, many years, since I was like 20 years old. So uh, uh, this lick that's the first part of that lick. So I glide to the ninth fret on the second string, seventh fret on the first string. And this bending is kind of fooling around between the notes uh, on the eighth fret on the second string, but I'm kind of bending it, not really reaching the note on the ninth fret. So it's somewhere in between. There, I, I don't know, it's, I can't explain it. It needs to be that blue note and everybody's blue note is their own blue note. So if you just bend a little bit and then go back and forth, it's gonna be just fine. Just. This is nice because we're adding a seventh in that E seventh chord, in, uh, right? So E chord, and now the seventh. But we're only keeping the. And then we'll need to go to the chord of A. So one more time, as just this whole block, which is, you can count with me. So two, three, four. Bending. So I've applied, you know, different voicings on the strings, kind of playing them uh, like this, or or you could also play this with just kind of brushing in the upstrokes, like a. Which I would apply if I'm about to play something more concrete when I go over to A. Uh, so that these uh, kind of notes are not just played the same way in both chords. And you maybe also notice that I was kind of sloppy when I went from one phrase to another. It's like a... See? I'm also touching the third and maybe fourth string with this. It, it needs to be like that. I like it. So, but. Uh, Now the strings are open, but I still pick them here, and then I kind of glide back. And now the chord of A. So uh, the the lick uh, that I also learned from Brown and McGee. I'm gonna go back to E. So th 
this lick is there in you know zillions of variations. Everybody plays it different. And uh, even if you play the same notes as somebody else played before you, you you'll still add your own stamp to it. It's just like it's impossible to play exactly like somebody else. You can really nail notes. There are many courses that give you exactly the note for note what the great masters did. If that's your game, that's fantastic. I'm like a more of a, okay, it's somewhere around there and yeah, let's play it. And then it turns out to be something maybe a little bit different. So the, the basic lick uh, is this. So I'm gliding from wherever I want, like second, third, fourth fret, uh, to the sixth fret on the third string. And everything I'm playing here is actually within this chord of A on the fifth fret. So we're just choosing the first three strings of that chord and fooling around with those notes. So. Slowly. Now I'm accompanying a little bit with my bass here, which is going like a one, two, three, four, because I'm used to uh, do that. But you can just might as well play without any basses, especially in the beginning. If this is totally new to you, just play the treble string notes and you know, just practice on that first. Just don't play it with your thumb. Because I've seen kind of, you know, people I've jammed with or played with, or some people who are maybe participants in my workshops. And, you know, as soon as you say, kind of don't, don't play the basses, they all of a sudden go down to the uh, treble strings with their thumb. Like that. They play like that. Which is fine, of course. It's, it's good if you can do the both. But uh, don't do it because you cannot control where the thumb is going. You always need to have a, a really good control over what's, what your picking fingers are doing. So, and there was this little bend here, but it didn't go. You can also play that, but I'm doing it this way. So. And then I'm going back to E. Uh, another kind of way to play this will be or any other combination of notes. So don't be afraid to experiment. It's like a or or. Try to do that slowly. Maybe something like that. So I'm just kind of giving you ideas that you don't uh, just kind of nail yourself into this one, two, two, do, 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 which is wonderful. It, it's a great lick. Just don't play the same every time. And this kind of syncopating uh, part came when I was really sure what I was doing in the main lick. So uh, zillions of, com of different combinations there. So that was, let's say, in the key of A. When it comes to uh, the B, of course, you can play like a sometimes I would do that in the B. So so and then, and then to the turnaround again uh, so or if I want to preserve the bases Turn around. I, 
I even think that Brown and McGee and Sonitary started some of the songs uh, with. <laughs> So that's what you could maybe do in the B. Let's do it slowly. So watch my back in hand. So it's a hammer on on the third string, and then just a note on the second string, and then I'll put this ninth here, and this note here on the ninth fret is actually a ninth note in the B major scale so that's why it's so nice to and then in the A that's a ninth of the A chord so you can play the same thing So sometimes I would just leave the basses alone just to emphasize whatever I want to play on the treble strings and then there are zillions of combinations here. Maybe so. First grip is here. Or grabbing the seventh chord. So already there, there are two different ways to do this. So either or with this finger on the third fret. And now we're coming to this. Uh, I'm gliding from the third to the second fret and then picking the open first string pressing on the second fret of a second string all together now so I'm only playing these three strings with a kind of slight hammer on here on the first fret as well so. to a new round and the new round is a new frequency and that frequency is up there on the 12th fret uh, there's one in between um, still belong to the second frequency so instead of playing this uh, you can also do like this so we're going to the pure E, e major chord here on the fourth fret so this is like your usual D, D sharp, E. But we're combining this. And then we go to A. This can be modified. Uh, you can do this bending to kind of put this on. So it's kind of, yeah, it's not really pure, this which note is this accompanying the first string which is like a plane here note of B but then so you're kind of creating uh, excitement in this lick you can also do it as you would grab the D chord but up here on the seventh fret And why we did this is because when you go from E, D sharp, D, this is kind of incorporating the note of seventh note in an E chord, and then you're going to to A. So I also think this was Brown and McGee as well in one of the solos, but I think I've heard Big Bill Bruzy playing this as well. Not really sure. So there you go. That's another kind of uh, lick in this second frequency. Now the third frequency, when we go all the way high up to this. I think 
many of you would recognize this lick because it's been played both on, you know, acoustic, uh, in acoustic blues, electric blues, very often uh, applied lick. But this can also be modified. So the first modification would be like a... So this little micro note. And then you bend it, so... All together. That's <laughs> just because I want to show you how making mistakes. But all right. And you will notice that I'm kind of jumping uh, in between these licks because if I would just play. It's okay, but there's no excitement in that. I like to kind of like to get to that note. I kind of grind into it. And uh, yeah, that's that first way to play this lick. Then there is another where you would go to the 12th and uh, 14th fret up here. So you go now. So uh, what could we play more in the chord of A uh, instead of just this? Well, you, you could go to the A 7th chord up here on the 9th fret. Uh, sometimes I would do... Then go back to E. So together with this uh, lick on the higher frequencies, I'll show you this other way of playing in the A. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm up here with these frequencies and then I want to do something else that will not uh, have these high notes up on the high frets. So kind of a contrasty way of playing. I don't know, I just kind of developed that way of playing, so. So what I play here, let's do it slowly. So I went from the form of A chord, we're playing only the third and the first string. And now the same fret from the seventh to the ninth. And I have a little kind of gliding, holding the, the fr uh, strings down. that up, up here I grab the A seventh chord this if I would just play it's okay but it's kind of too majory for my taste so I kind of put in the seventh just to kind of spice it up and then I go back to that and then I go nicely go over to the chord of E and this if I if I would play a blues in A as a main main key then this little lick would be something that I would use before going to the D chord without trying to confuse you too much if you haven't done this before but let's say if if I'm in A then I go go fourth chord uh, when we play the blues in A, which will be the D7. So many licks are kind of going from key to key and can be applied in several keys, which is great that you know we can learn them and then just apply them when they suit somewhere nicely. Now back to the back out that I promised you, but now it's going to be very basic, only basses, so you can do all nice and spicy notes. Go back to the beginning of the video, maybe learn these licks from the beginning and then just come back to this part and play to this backup.
starting right now. Three, two, one, and... Well done.